Hey everyone, in this video I am once again going to pull out a die and stencil combo set that I have purchased but haven't used yet. So this is a really neat coordinating stencil and I'll show you what it looks like on the back. I have just fallen in love with this and I really wanted to have this in my collection. And you also can get a coordinating stamp, which would be really neat as well. I just decided to get the stencils and then the coordinating die. So I'm gonna show you how to do a really fun card with just those two elements, but just know that you can still grab an additional part of this collection in the stamp. So I'm going to pull some colors. I believe there's four stencils. Oh, actually it says five. Oh, I need to grab an additional color. I thought it was just four. Okay, so it looks like it's um, each of the little, I kind of want to call them petals, <laughs> each of the little petals and then the center square. Okay, so no problem. I'll grab an additional color. Okay, so my original colors that I chose, because I thought it was four, is watermelon, creamsicle, lemongrass, and eucalyptus. I adore this color combination, but I'm going to grab an additional color and do powder as well. Okay, so I have a piece of 110 pound cardstock here. You can use any weight that you'd like. I would do either 80 or 110 pound. I had a scrap in the 110, so that's why I'm going to use this. And then I'm going to just use my Misty to get everything positioned with the stencils. Okay, so I'm gonna use my larger Misty and simply place this piece right here. Okay. So now, okay, let's, how does this work? This is stencil one, and then I wanna see what stencil two does. Oh, okay, okay, so I think I wanna start with the watermelon. So I'm gonna put my stencil, actually what I think I'll do is tape that down. I'm just grabbing a little piece of washi tape, making sure everything is snug in the corner. And then I will grab a blender brush and start with this first color. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap off some on the side of my mat. I love this color, watermelon. It is so pretty. And again, this color combination is just one of my absolute favorites. And I'm excited to add the little powder into this mix just to see how I like that as well. And you can do some shading I'm just going to do all over color for this, but you can get even more creative. So I have mentioned that stencils are one of my favorite ways to do cards. I just really love how quick you can add color. I also have found lately that I love coloring with alcohol markers. So I'm curious on what your favorite technique to do is with card making. Let me know in the comment section down below. Oops. I don't need to worry too much since that paper is taped, but I'm just gonna add a couple more pieces there. Okay, there we go. So that is our first layer and I'll clean this off in a bit, but I'm just gonna keep going. And the second stencil is this one. Oh, okay, so that's not really um, all gonna be in the same place. That color is gonna be dispersed. It's not going to have, let's look at the back. It's not going to have a methodical order to it. That actually is helpful to me. So do you see what I'm saying? Like the pink, if we're taking the light pink, for example, here, the light pink isn't in the same spot every time, which actually helps me because I was really starting to wonder which um, color to put in which spot, excuse me. So that's actually helpful that I don't really need to overthink this because it's going to just kind of be a mumbo jumbo. Okay, the next one I'll do, I'll just go down the line then, is creamsicle. I guess though that the only thing that does really matter that we have control over is the middle color. So I'm wondering what I should do for that middle color. Maybe I'll just make that the powder. Okay, so creamsicle is next. 
This is the orange that I didn't know that I needed. I love this color. It's more of a sherbet color. It reminds me of summers at my grandma's. She would always take us to this one ice cream stand and we would get an orange twist. Let me know if you ever had an orange twist. So it is a sherbet and vanilla twist. And it is just one of those things that is very nostalgic about summertime for me when we used to do that with my grandma. And if we travel to where she lived, um, my mom would always stop there too so that we could enjoy some together. So I think I will think of that every time I use this color because it's exactly what it reminds me of. And now I really want one. <laughs> it reminds me also, so my other grandma, um, so my first grandma, did, we did the creamsicle cones. Um, and then my other grandma, she always got us the little cups that are sherbet and vanilla with the wooden spoons. Oh my gosh, that was Christmas every year. We always had that after dinner and right before gifts. We did like a little Christmas Eve thing and I can just taste that wooden spoon. I know that sounds really weird, but if you know, you know. If you've ever had one, it's like the, the taste of the wooden spoon um, is a thing. So the third one is going to be here and I think I'll just go in with lemongrass. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I'm just going to continue on. Okay, make sure that that's nice and snug. I think it is. Okay, lemongrass is next. This is a fun color. This does come on very bold, so you want to definitely tap it off a little bit. See how bold that is right away? And then I just use that little um, bit from my mat to continue on. This one is very, very, I don't know. I like to say it comes in hot because <laughs> it's exactly what it does. It's just, it's a spitfire. Okay, ooh, I got a little bit much there, but hopefully that smooths out. If not, that's where our sentiment will go. We'll just switch it around. Okay, yeah, be careful with this lemongrass. It's gorgeous, but it can be, you can get carried away with it. Okay, so there is this one. Ooh, I love it, it's so neat. Okay, and then I'm going to do eucalyptus. So, do eucalyptus here. Should I do eucalyptus liptus, or mint? No, I'm gonna stick with my original one. It's looking very retro, I like it. Oh, eucalyptus, okay. So my hands, I don't know if you notice, hopefully not. Oh my gosh, I have scratches all over <laughs> because, okay, we have just had, at the timing of filming this video, it's May and we just had a really, really, really warm day. And so my little guy and I decided to have a little picnic and then all of a sudden, I feel like I just kind of took off in the yard and started doing random chores and one thing I did was I really really pruned back a bush and I thought it would take me just a few moments but I got carried away so I didn't put any gardening gloves on or anything and then all of a sudden I looked down and I didn't realize that I was getting so scratched up it was just like crazy so if you see that then it was because I was trying to be a gardener today but hey my yard does look really good now so no regrets, but definitely need to grab the gardening gloves next time. Okay, so we'll have to see what this middle color ends up being. It's kind of like a pumpkin orange. <laughs> no, we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so there we go. Ooh, I like this. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we have our final one, and it's this... Just tiny little square. Oh, did, oh, no, it was just the stencil. I thought something was, I think something's on the stencil. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> it's not on the paper. All right, so put eucalyptus away. Grab powder. 
and paired with my little scratches on my hands, I got a crazy sunburn today. I guess I just didn't anticipate after it's been just so cold for so long. I didn't anticipate the first day to be so hot. It was awesome though, no regrets. I think I'm gonna sleep super well tonight with just knowing I got so much fresh air. It's the best type of tired. Okay, so then there's the middle. Okay, pretty cool. Now what I can do is I'm going to really quickly clean up my space so I don't get anything on my cardstock, but that's really neat. I think that's fun. Okay, let's tuck this guy away, but I'm gonna bring that back out probably pretty soon. Okay, so now we can bring in this die and get it positioned just so and some here too. All right, I'm going to trim down this because I'm going to use this for my sentiment. I think I'm gonna do some heat embossing. Okay, there we go. All right, let's send this on through and see how neat this die is. I'm looking forward to seeing how this looks once it's all trimmed out. Okay. Pop that all on out. That is so cute. Isn't that fun? Okay, so you could cut a couple of layers of this and then layer it up so that you have some dimension. I think I'm going to use some foam squares. So I'm gonna do that, but just know you can just run this through on some additional cardstock and build it up that way as well. All right, so I need to decide on a sentiment. I'm really loving this. I think that looks really cute. And I think we'll do some heat embossing. Okay, I have this stamp set. It's called Happy For You, and it has some of the most beautiful sentiments. We have You Are Strong, Congrats, Happy For You, which I think I'm going to do, and Thanks For All You Do. I think, we, and which one? I think this was our kind of muddy one, so that actually works perfectly, because I was going to do something like that. I'm gonna do the Happy For You. I think that's really, really, um, kind of versatile. You can say it for just about anything, right? Some type of congratulations or I don't know, just because. I like stuff that I can grab for just about anything. Okay, so I'm going to do this because I want to try and cut out a couple sentiments here. So let's do that. And then I'm gonna grab my Versamark. And I can't remember if I've used this particular sentiment stamp before, so I'll just condition that really quick and then add the first mark. Oh, and I need to do my anti-static powder as well. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna reapply that really quick and stamp that down. Great, I think I'll do it just once more. Although it's probably good with just one coat. Okay. And then I think I'll do, let me see. I think I'll do an ultra fine, just plain gold. Okay, that looks great. Let's set this to the side once more and I'll grab that stamp later. All right, now I'll just grab a little clothespin as well as my embossing powder. Okay, and focus right over here. Ooh, that looks pretty good. have an area, let me see if I can find my brush, that just has a tiny bit of extra. Mm 
Oops, I got a little too much off there. Let me try that again. Oh, that's actually, that actually really helped. Okay, let's wipe that extra off. One down here. And we should be good to heat that up. And then I'll also put the rest back into this little container. That is really pretty. I like that. Okay, I'm going to grab the coordinating die, cut this out, and then cut an additional layer out. Okay, there's our first little layer. And then again, I'll just move this over and cut once more. And I only think two will be fine because it's the 110 pounds, so. That should be just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and add some glue here. I'm gonna grab some tweezers and then just put this glue right on the back. We'll just layer this right on up, get a little bit of dimension and we'll have our sentiment all ready to go. I'm just gonna use this liquid glue. These dropper bottles are so nice for doing really small little dainty tasks, so I'll link them below as well. Here we go. Spin that around and there we go. Okay, I'll just kind of wiggle that into place and then grab a little stamp block and just let that sit for a bit. Okay, now we can do this piece. So let me grab my card base. Bringing in my scoreboard, I'm going to do 110 pound cardstock once more. This is sized at 11 by four and a quarter. And I'll place that middle score line right at five and a half. And then I'll just crease that down. Now this final card size is A2 size. So that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And this is a top folding card. All right, now is the fun part. We're gonna construct this all up. I'm going to place this right on my mat with these magnets so it doesn't move. And then with this piece, I'm going to turn this over and add my foam squares. So I think I'll just add a single one. Actually, I have two sizes of these foam squares. So why don't I do a big one on these bigger areas and then I can grab my small ones for that little tiny square. That looks pretty good. And then again, I'll just go through with the smaller size. That way we have some support in there as well and build that up. Now I will grab a little, well, I think I can do this. Sometimes I grab a little weeding tool to help pull these off, but I'm lazy, I don't wanna go grab it. It's actually coming off very, very nicely. Okay, so I released all of those little backers. Now I can just, oh, hold on, I'm gonna do it this way because this was kind of my blotchy blend there and I want to hide that ideally with my sentiment or just kind of mend it with my sentiment. Ooh, that looks really neat. I like the dimension there. So then it's not gonna fully cover that blotched area, but it will definitely distract from it. Ooh, that's really cute. Um, I think I'll do something like that. And I'm going to place it right down with liquid glue. So I'll use the tweezers just once more and add that liquid glue right to the back. All right. And then I will do this. I just love the shimmer of an embossed look. It's so pretty and it catches the light and it just makes it just gorgeous. I, I don't have the proper words for it. It's just really pretty. Looking at it straight on, it doesn't look like much, but once you tilt it, it just looks so pretty. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm going to add just a couple little 
sequins, I think, just to give it some excitement. Not that this doesn't have excitement already. I think I won't bring in any other color because the color has been taken care of here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two here and then I'm gonna add a trio here. Let me grab my little wand and let's find the size. Okay, do that. And then a teeny tiny one there. And then the bottom. And I like how that just frames that sentiment. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and just spin this around and add my little stamp on the back so that it'll be all ready to go. There we go. Okay, there's the final card. I think that is so fun. I love how funky and retro that is. Again, let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite technique for card making is. I truly love the ink blending. And again, coloring with Copic markers is definitely becoming one of my favorites as well. So I'd love to hear what yours is. And I can't wait to continue crafting with you soon. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.